Rocket Health is a telemedicine and digital health company in Uganda, where she has led and supported the development and execution of the brand's marketing and communication strategy since its inception in August 2019. She served at Night Frank Uganda. She's worked with the Vision Group in terms of business development initiatives. She's worked with the Vision Group as a journalist for publications Flair, Bride and Groom, Swag Magazine, and is a producer of several programs on Urban TV. She holds a postgrad diploma in marketing management from Uganda Management Institute and certificates in digital marketing and content development. And she's currently finalizing her master's in management studies, marketing management from the same university. Let's welcome Sandra. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sandra. I work with uh, Rocket Health. I must confess my heart is racing at 200 kilometers per hour. <laughs> I'm really honored to be here. I'd like to thank Victor and the team for welcoming us. And uh, when he invited us, he said, Sandra, I would like you to speak about what you're doing in Uganda in regards to our brand, which is called Rocket Health. So what we do as Rocket Health, we are a digital health company and telemedicine company. We've been able to develop uh, ways in which Africans all over Africa or even in other countries can access a doctor via a mobile phone or WhatsApp or text or even the website and be able to get lab services and those services are delivered to their location get medicine delivered to their location and a lot more. So our service has been, have you been able to get my slides? <laughs> okay. So our service has been um, motivated by some of the challenges that we are facing as Africa, as a globe, as a continent. And we are seeing that Africa has a quarter of the world's disease burden. And with such statistics, we also see that only 2% of the world's doctors are serving in Africa. So the resources to actually help us meet all our healthcare needs are just very limited if we are to all walk into a hospital or even a clinic. And on top of that, we are seeing that the doctor to, the doctor to patient ratio is also extremely large. When we look at Kenya, it is one doctor serving 16,000 people. When we look at Uganda, Tanzania, one doctor serving 25,000 people. So even if we all walked into a facility to get medical care, we would not be able to see a doctor at the time. So when we were approached uh, from Knight Frank, one of the challenges is that marketers are not interested in working with startups. Initially, Rocket Health uh, was, no, Rocket Health was actually non-existent. We had the medical concierge group which is the mother of the brand. And the challenge was that many marketers are running away from serving startups. We want to serve more established brands. We want to serve KCB that has been here for years. We want to serve, you know, stand, stand, standard banks that has been here for years. And so if we are going to expand as a, as a continent, we need to be able to support startups that are developing. And one of those startups is Rocket Health. So we've also seen that in Africa, 65% of communicable diseases are leading to death, are leading people to death. And we are looking at malaria, we are looking at cholera, and these are things that we can easily prevent if, if well taken care of, if treated early. And we are also seeing that by 2030, non-communicable diseases are also going to lead to death in Africa. By non-communicable diseases, we are talking about hypertension. Um, excuse me. We are talking about hypertension. We are talking about diabetes. We are talking about cancers. And one way or the other, each one of us has been affected by these diseases. 
we saw that COVID-19, many of them were having challenges. Many of them were at risk at getting uh, COVID-19. So they were stuck at home. They couldn't get medication. So what have we done as Rocket Health to ensure that this challenge is met within Africa? Thank you. So what are we trying to do to ensure that we solve these problems, to ensure that Africa as a whole is able to access medical care wherever they need to access a doctor. So this is how our model works. We have a doctor, we have a call center that has doctors and it operates 24 seven. So either you're using our website, which is rockethealth.shop or you're calling toll free or you're using a USSD, you're able to access a doctor, explain to the doctor how you're feeling and then the doctor is able to give you advice. If the doctor sees that we need to get maybe a test or a lab sample for us to fully assess what exactly is wrong with you, we send a lab technician to your location uh, and it doesn't matter, it could be your office, could be your home, wherever it is that you're convenient, that is convenient for you to draw that sample. We take the sample for testing in our lab, we send the results to the doctor, then the doctor calls the patient back. So the results are also shared electronically or via email or WhatsApp. So once the doctor sees that you need medication, that request is sent to the pharmacy. Then the pharmacy processes it and sends you a prescription. So we have a pharmacy technician to deliver that prescription to you, all in the comfort of your home. If you feel we know there is a generation of people who are not very comfortable with technology, they feel like we still need to be able to see a doctor. I still want a doctor to see me, to touch me, you know, to check my eyes. And then that's how I'll feel that I've gotten medical care. So we have a clinic that operates on only appointments, but we also accommodate people who walk in. By appointments, we mean you set a time when you want to come into the clinic. We've given you um, a time frame of 45 minutes. Within that, those 45 minutes, you're able to talk to a doctor. The doctor will then advise whether you get a lab test, we collect the sample, then you can proceed to go to your work. The results will find you, the explanation will find you, and also the medication will find you. And that is how we are trying to ensure that all Africans across the continent or even living elsewhere are able to access healthcare. But today we are here to talk about customer service and how we can use digital technologies to improve for our brands that we are serving and for the businesses. So as businesses, as business owners that are here today, the core reason why we exist is because there is a customer on the other side that needs help that needs a solution to a problem that they have. So even us as marketers, the reason why we are seated in this room is because there is a challenge that we want to solve for our customer. There is a product or a service that has provided the jobs that we are doing. So it is important that we understand what customers needs and then create value through the products and services that we are giving them. So good customer service is something that we need to front. And this means creating relationships with our customers. It is not about, it's not enough for us to say, we want to gain revenues, we want to get profits. We need to create relationships to ensure that we get a lifetime value from this customer. And uh, with customer service, we are looking at all the interactions that the customer is having with us, either before purchase, uh, during purchase and after purchase, how we are interacting with them on social media, when they call us, how we, how we respond to their requests, how, you know, the emotional intelligence, and then a lot of other channels that we are using to reach out. And then the interactions after sale, it's not enough for us to just acquire a customer. We need to be able to engage them over time for us to realize uh, long-term retention benefits or even the lifetime value from the customer. Plus the quality of attention. We all know every time you walk into a facility to get a service, you want the agent on the other side to give you attention. So customer service requires us to give customers our attention. If you're on your mobile phone and a customer walks up to you, you put that aside. It is just not okay for us to go on with business when there is a customer that needs to be served. So every time a customer gets a good service, they're going to recommend a lot more people. They're going to recommend two people. But if they get a bad service, we very well know, uh, especially with millennials, they'll go and throw a rant on social media. Before you know it, you have a crisis to deal with. 
So what is the state of customer service now? We are seeing uh, uh, many companies or even many marketers, we are prioritizing acquisition over retention. We want to know if, if we have launched a product, we want to know how many people have used the product as opposed to the lifetime benefit we can give to the customer or the customer can get from us. So we need to ensure that for everything that we do, we are looking long-term and not just the short-term benefits. We are seeing that customer service investment projects are being sidelined. For us to be able to um, provide, sorry. Sorry. So for us to be able to provide a great service, we need to ensure that we set up the right tools for our teams to work with and uh, ensure that they know uh, how to use those systems. Plus, of course, departmental efficiencies. We see that for many organizations that we are working with, I'll speak for our organization, we have different uh, rocket health, we have different BUs, and every time we have pro products to, to, to promote or we have a service to launch, everybody thinks that is marketing's monkey. But we need to go away from you know, departments thinking that everything that we do is just for marketing. So it is, we are the brand custodians and it is important that we take all departments through uh, why the business exists, the value that we are giving to the client and why they need to do the jobs that they're doing. The last one is uh, agent training. Uh, which now we see most times when we recruit agents into our customer contact centers or even employees, we are mostly fronting how they can use that technology that we have provided. If it is a tool, how are you using that tool to provide a service? But we are not going deep to understand or to train them how best they can give that service to a customer. We are looking at product knowledge. Do they fully understand the business that we do? Do they fully understand the brand promise? Do they fully understand the value to the customer? Do they know what it means to do the job that they're doing? So we need to go a lot, we need to do a lot of work when it comes to that area and ensure that they also have training in people skills. Most of the customers are reaching out to us because they have a pain point and they, and they need us to solve their problems. So as marketers, we need to be in the know of the, of the situation now and then be able to work towards improving it. So what do customers consider a good service? So it's important that uh, as we are going to scale, I know there are very many businesses here or even startups, you want to break into the market, you want, you want to gain credibility, you need to fully understand what customers are considering a good service. And one of those is rapid response time. We are seeing that customers are valuing speed, they're valuing efficiencies. They want value for their time, they want value for their money. Customers want us to be able to provide 24-7 support. Is it via your website? Do you have a self-help app? Anything that can enable them access you as and when they want you to be available. We are looking at omni-channel supports. Customers want to reach us through channels that are very convenient for them. If for me, I'm comfortable using a mobile phone to call you, I need to be able to access you there. If it's uh, TikTok or Twitter, I want to be able to access you there. So we need to be willing to go where the customers want us to be. And of course, customers desire self-service. They want to find information about a product. They want to find information about your service and how they can be able to access it. So is it creating FAQs? Are we publishing them on our website? Are we constantly updating our digital footprint with all the information that the customer needs? Emotional intelligence, it is how we read and react to their emotions. If I walk up to you and I'm very errant and then you think you can give me an attitude, there is a person who is offering that service and probably a walk to them. So customers have, they have options, so it's important that we read their emotions before they come to, before we give them a service. And then we assess and then we treat them in a way that they deserve to be treated. Problem, creative problem solving, going the extra mind to find an effective and efficient solution for the customer. 
Uh, one of the challenge, challenges that we faced at the beginning of the pandemic is when mothers, new mothers were unable to get a vaccine for their children or even chronic patients who are at home, their staff, they can't go to see their physician, they can't find their medication. And um, just at the start of the pandemic, we decided to launch home vaccination services. So we see their mothers who have just had children, their children need to get vaccinated. And every time they get into a hospital, probably there is a very high risk for them to get infected. So we need to be able to identify the challenges that customers are getting as they are getting our services and then find very quick solutions to them. And of course, feedback. As marketers, we can't always shy away from feedback. Customers are going to give us feedback on any channel and we need to be able to act on it very fast and use it to create solutions for them use it to create value for them through our products, through our services. And for every solution, we need to be able to personalize it according to how the client needs to get that service. So also as we scale throughout Africa, as brands go into Africa and then uh, serve all these very other, very many nations, we need to understand what really drives customers away. And from this report that was done by PricewaterCoopers, they did a survey in 156 countries that they serve, and none of these it has anything to do with our products apart from technology, how quick you are supposed, how quick we can adapt to technology. But most of them had to do with people skills, the attitudes towards the product or the service that we are providing, the attitude towards being customer centric, the attitude towards business growth and long-term growth and friendly service. How do you respond when a customer reaches up to you? The attitude that you also give them when you're serving them. And trustworthy companies, telling them one thing and then delivering low on your expectations. These are things, some of the things that are really driving customers away. And as marketers, if we need to scale, if, we, if you are working on a startup and you need to be able to grow, we need to take take note of the things that drive customers away and go back through our processes and reinvent um, you reinvent with technologies, reinvent with training, and be able to find uh, long-term solutions for our customers. So what is the future of customer service going to look like? And today I'm also here to share some of the things that we've been working with and some of the things that we've been using as a brand. Uh, Omnichannel presence is going to be uh, everything. Presence, communication, we need to be able to have integrated CRM systems. And by integration, that means we have one particular software that is getting all data from all these channels that we are using to interact with customers. Then we are, we are able to, you know, review our data, um, analyze it and find solutions for the customers. The other is quality and consistent conversations across the channels. We need to be very consistent in how we relay our messages. We need to be very consistent in how we deliver our services because customers are going to return. If you have given them a good a good um, experience the first time, they'll expect that same experience the next time they come to you. We are, look, we are seeing that personalization will also take another center stage, and that is a way for us to um, recommend accurate products for them. Um, I, I, I see what uh, Glovo has done, Jumia, Amazon, they have done so much to just go into their back end and review client data and be able to understand clients. Uh, user behavior, and then recommend products for them. If you're having a website and e-commerce side, it's important that every time you're able to see your client's behavior over time and then recommend products for them. Then we need to also get it right the very first time. When we have a customer that we have recruited into our ecosystem, are we collecting the, the information that we need to personalize content for them? And... Um, one of the things we've done is um, every time we have customers, we need to understand through what channel they have used to get to us and then start to communicate to them through those channels. And uh, we need to also gather if, if there is a family that is subscribed to a healthcare plan, how many children are they and how can we help the mother take care of the children over time through health messages, giving them health tips, giving them um videos from our doctors that they can always refer to. So just going the extra mile to ensure that the customer is given more and more resources. Self-service and optimization. 
This is either through our mobile apps, our chatbots, a USD menus. Uh, we recently launched a USSD menu whereby clients can all be able to access a consultation, request a callback from the lab or pharmacy, and just uh, speak to a medical agent on the other end. And every time we are creating these apps, we need to ensure that we are creating for the users. It's not enough for us to say, we have created an app, we now have an app, please go and use it. Is it user-friendly? How is the user experience throughout uh, the time they're using it? Then we need to stay away from copying and pasting. There are so many developers that have developed very good chatbots. They are going to come to us and propose that they install those to the websites, WhatsApp or Facebook, but we can't always copy and paste. We need to be able to, to gather the FAQs or the frequently asked questions from our customers, uh, generate, then we generate feedback, rather we generate uh, responses that the, that the bot can be able to use. So every time we get such, such some of these software, we need to ensure that they are that we need to ensure that they are developed for the customer. We are seeing that uh, marketing in Africa is going to be led by data. Sorry, uh, data-driven decisions, and then uh, we need to find ways that we can invest in new technologies to be able to get the metrics. We are going into boardrooms and they're asking for performances. It is not enough for us to say, these are the number of people that have used. We need to understand what is the lifetime value that the customer is getting after using the service. What is the retention rate? There is a lot more that we can do with metrics and it's important that we find integrated software that can, that, that can gather all this data from the different sources or different communication channels and then we can review, analyze and interpret and develop for the customer. Then we have to uh, ensure that most of our staff are highly skilled and they're customer centric. We, when we are hiring, oftentimes uh, we've seen for many businesses that they are hiring customer agents uh, because they need to, sometimes because there is a need and we need to fill that seat really quick. But right now we need to sit at the table to, to fully get engaged every time we have an interview with the customer support agent. We need to understand what their values are we need to understand whether they are able to communicate to your clients, they're able to, to, to relay the product information to your clients, they're able to transfer that value that the business gives to the client and still offer client a value or a good service. Then conducting extensive training. Earlier I had said that we are doing a lot of training on how to use systems, but now we need to do training on people skills, we need to do training on, on product um, knowledge and a lot more. Then we need to empower our agents to make decisions for and resolutions for the customers. So we've seen some businesses where a customer complains, but then you need to engage finance or procurement before you know it, it's a very long tedious process. But then as agents, we need to, agents need to be empowered to resolve a solution. If a customer has made a booking, they're paid, but they want to cancel, can we then revert that money back to the account? If a customer needs to, to get a transfer, is the agent able to transfer that customer to another maybe premise or branch to be served? So uh, today I would like to remind marketers that we shouldn't shy away from going, uh, um, doing the extra step to give a good service, to give customers a good experience. Uh, we can see that customers are willing to pay more for a good experience. So I've gathered still data from Price Water Coopers from the different sectors that shows how much more customers are willing to pay for a good service. Depending on the sector you're in, we can see that there is definitely a percentage that is attached to customer service, that is attached to um, customer experience, that is also attached to just having that personal relationship with a the customer. They're willing to go back to your business. That is the end of my presentation. So I would like to ask everybody, are you ready to improve customer service for whichever business that you're representing? Thank you.